Okay, hello again. This time in a different role. As Roman said, uh, I work at CESNAM as the head of research, but today I'm not going to talk about what we do at CESNAM. Uh, instead, I will uh, be speaking about something which has seemingly nothing to do with CESNAM. It is the poetry. More specifically, uh, I will be speaking about the role of poetry, uh, the role of artificial intelligence in poetry. I had a dream. When I was a young boy, uh, I was a very passionate reader and I dreamt about writing my own book. Uh, but you know, uh, writing a book is, is a hard work and I am a lazy man, so I've never written anything. Until last week. Last week, I turned my dream into the reality. On this slide, this, this slide, this screenshot has been taken uh, on one of the biggest uh, internet bookstores, online bookstores in the Czech Republic, and what you can see uh, is my book. Uh, the only problem with this book is that I didn't write it. I didn't write it at all. The only thing I did is that I wrote a computer program which generated this book instead of me. Even the name of, of the, book, the, the book was generated by the computer. And today, I'd like to tell you a story about turning an idea or a dream into a real product. In the beginning uh, was an impulse. This impulse, in this case, was a blog post written by Andre Karpaty. Andre is a PhD student at Stanford, and this uh, this blog post was about uh, about language modeling. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with language models, language models are mathematical models uh, which uh, compute. A probability of a sentence or a, of a sequence of words or even sequence of, uh, of characters. And those language models are very useful, for example, in uh, speech recognition, where we, uh, when al analyzing the signals, we have many possibilities how to uh, rewrite the sound. And based on these language models, we can choose the best one, the most probable one. But such, uh, uh, such uh, <coughs> language models can also be used for generating new text. And this was the case, uh, the, uh, th th this, this was what uh, Andrei Karpaty did. He uh, trained his language model based on recurrent neural networks uh, on uh, a corpus of uh, mathematical articles and he generated new articles. This is an example of it, its outcome. Uh, it's probably hard for you to read it because the, the, the font is small, but uh, on the first side it looks like a perfect mathematical article, but if you read it more carefully uh, you can notice that uh, many of the sentences doesn't make sense. But he also tried, uh, for example, to train his uh, language model on uh, Shakespeare's plays, and he gener generated new, new Shakespeare. And as uh, similarly, it uh, also looked like uh, sh like Shakespeare, but the sentences weren't um, ha hadn't any meaning sometimes. But the result was quite impressive. So I decided. Uh, to try it for the Czech language, but instead of generating, uh, instead of generating mathematical articles or uh, uh, or long text, I decided to 
generate poetry. And it had two reasons. The first reason is that uh, generated poetry seems to be uh, quite amazing, especially for people who don't know how the mathematics behind it works. And the second reason is that generating poetry is actually much easier than generating uh, long texts, because uh, in poetry uh, there is a freedom of interpretation uh, and there are, also, there, there are usually many ways how to interpret the poem. So it, it, is, it is easier. And moreover, uh, poems are usually quite short, so it is also an ad advantage. So I crawled uh, a web server, which is uh, the name of the web server is called is, is supermusic.sk. It's a server. It's a server uh, full of uh, Czech and Slovak lyrics, and I used the algorithm uh, by Andrei Karpaty with slight modifications, and I trained uh, my own language model on it. And this is the result. On the left-hand left side, you can see the original generated version. On the right side is my poor translation into English, but uh, I, will, I will read it out, the, the English version. The name is Autumn Song. Why don't you kill, so kill yourself? A phone call isn't hope. This planet is still your home. Your time is still going on. Then it continues, na 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 na, you know, because it is a song. And then, I know I'm revealing a book of dreams. I'll find out I'm nothing more than this. So you can notice this, that uh, the algorithm, it, even though it generates the, the text uh, character by character, it generates uh, reasonable words, even uh, grammatically, syntactically, the uh, the rhymes are are correct, and there's also uh, some meaning in 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 it. But uh, as long as the, the the text is too long, the algorithm uh, forgets what was on, on the beginning because it has limited memory. So, for example, these these two lines uh, are quite far from what was written at the beginning. That's why uh, short poems were usually uh, better. There's another example, a very short poem or ly lyric. Uh, it, the name is You Aren't Tamara and You Are Ludmila. Tamara and Ludmila are Czech, uh, Czech names of women. So it's quite funny, but uh, you know, it's, it's not bad. So I, uh, I generated se several uh, poems or, li or lyrics and published it at, uh, on, on, my, on my blog. On, on my blog. And what happened really amazed me. The blog post got 1,000 li Facebook likes in one day and I get Two o in, in one week, I get two offers from publishers. They wanted to publish book of generated poems, <laughs> which was amazing. So I decided to work on this problem more precisely. In the meantime, uh, Google published this open source version of their framework for machine learning or artificial intelligence. It's called TensorFlow. You've already heard to today about it. How many of you know TensorFlow? Okay, most of you, that's great. So it is a framework or, or a library for very efficient computations using GPUs. So I uh, rewrote the implementation of Andrei Karpaty, which was uh, originally uh, in Torch. And I rewrote it into TensorFlow because I'm, I don't like Lua. And this is uh, how the simple language model looks like. This, uh, this, this is my, uh, the, the, the most technical slide, I promise. Uh, 
as I said, uh, the, the, the generating of the poems works uh, letter by letter. So the goal of the algorithm is based on the, the history, predict the next letter. And it is trained in this way. So here we have an input of the first step. It is P. It is represented as a vector. And we have a neural network. In this case, it is a uh, long short term, is, it is a rec recurrent neural network uh, based on a long short term memory. And it is uh, taught to predict the probability of the next letter. So the output of this, uh, of this network is a uh, probability distribution over all letters. And we can sample from this distribution and sample, for example, O. And we take O as the input of the, ad of, of the next step and generate the next, and so on and so on. But I, I, I forget to say one important thing. Uh, we also use uh, the history represented as a, as a hidden state of the pre in from the previous step. So the input is not only uh, the letter, but also uh, the history compressed using the neural network. So this is how, uh, uh, how language models work. But I didn't want to create a language model. I wanted to create a poem generator. So this is, uh, this is the architecture of my generator. It has two parts. The first part is a title generator, and the second part is body generator. The title generator wo wo works exactly uh, like, like the language model. So it is initialized randomly, and it generates, it is, uh, uh, the, 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 mm, the training data is uh, a corpus of, uh, of titles, and uh, it, it, uh, the, the goal of this component is to generate new, ti new title. But then, when we want to generate the body, uh, we, use, we, we, we don't initialize it randomly, but we use the memory state from, from the title as the initialization of this generator. Moreover, this, this memory state uh, is available at every step of the generating process. So it, it doesn't have a problem with forgetting this, this information about the topic of the, of the po poem is available through the whole uh, process. Okay, this is how the poems were generated. But we can slightly modify this architecture and use it for something different. For example, uh, we have a perfect uh, name for a poem, but we are lazy to create the poem itself. So we can force the title generator to generate the title we want. It is uh, pretty simple. And we use the resulting memory state to initialize the body generator. So the, the body is then uh, generated uh, on the same topic as, as the title. And we can modify it in a different way. For example, we have a great poem but we, we don't know how to name it. So we can uh, modify the, the architecture and force the body generator to, uh, to generate our poem and then use the memory state to generate new title. Pretty straightforward and it is very easy to implement it in, in TensorFlow. So I wanted to generate uh, poems, so I created a corpus of from uh, PSMAC, which is a Czech server where uh, non-professional writers publish their uh, novels or poems. I created a corpus of uh, 60 or 80,000 poems, and I trained a generator of poems, and the result is, is this book. 
here are some examples. Uh, the first, uh, I, I will uh, read them out. The first one is called, the, the name is November. I'm falling asleep, crying, dying, thinking. What do you feel? I feel your weakness and whiskey. So it is, uh, uh, as you can see, it is a little bit better than the previous version. Uh, I have another example. This time I will read it in Czech because, uh, because there is a very simple but funny rhyme and it was hard to translate it into English. Spravedlnost. Na tvou dekanentní duši, ráno i v poledne, Bůh má připravenou kuši. Uh, okay, so uh, those were two examples. They are not bad, but there's something more inside. For example, the algorithm is able to generate uh, new metaphors. I have two examples. The first one is body full of blush of dawn. Blush of dawn means it's the red sky in the morning or in the evening. And actually this metaphor uh, refers to harmed or dead body in one, in one poem. Another generated metaphor is as rare as leaves of trees. And this time the, this, this metaphor uh, referred to something which is anything but not rare. So it's also a nice metaphor. Of course, uh, I try to uh, look at the corpus and find this metaphor in the corpus but I didn't find them. So uh, the algorithm, the, the neural network is, uh, is able to create metaphors. It's amazing, right? Maybe you ask, how is that possible? Uh, uh, the, the answer is simple. There, there, there is no magic uh, behind it. The, uh, the answer is computational power. The algorithm I used are 10 or 20 years old. There is nothing new. But uh, if I try to, uh, to create this uh, five or 10 years ago, the learning process would take uh, two years. Today, it takes two, two days. So, uh, it is amazing. But you may also ask for any really meaningful application because, uh, okay, uh, poems are fine, but, who, fine, but who, who cares? Actually, there are many, many applications of such recurrent neural networks. Uh, I've already mentioned language models, uh, but we have also many applications at Cessna. For example, we can use recurrent neural networks uh, for the task which is called image captioning. So we have an image and we can uh, train a neural network to describe what's the content of the image. Or an another application we use, uh, we use it for uh, the task which is called uh, entity recognition because we don't uh, we can modify it and uh, instead of uh, predicting next letter we can predict uh, the boundaries between entities or we can predict uh, for example uh, sentiment of a sentence using recurrent neural networks so there are many applications, and uh, uh, this is my message from this, from this talk. Even though something may seem to be impossible, probably it's not. And machine learning ca can help you to solve uh, seemingly very complex problems. So now go and be memorable. Thank you.
How many copies did you sell? Sorry? How many copies of the book did you sell? Uh, it's for free. So you can download it for free. How many downloads then? Uh, it's, uh, it's available for one week and already we have about 3,000 downloads. Thank you for your presentation. I would like to ask, do you need still uh, to have a human judgment to filter out the meaningful points? Uh, so, how many, how many points did you generate and how many did you filter out? Yes, I would say that this is the same as uh, when uh, a real uh, poet creates his, his poem. <laughs> uh, okay, so what, what's the ratio? He, uh, he doesn't publish everything, so I, I have to select some of them and uh, the, the ratio of successful selection is about uh, 1 uh, to 50 in the newest algorithm. So some of your poems, or one of the poems, actually did rhyme. Uh, can your new neural network uh, actually um, make poems rhyme, or would you need to do something else to make them rhyme in the, in the way that Czech poems usually do? It would be definitely possible, but the problem is that I, uh, I had uh, so many training examples with rhymes. So the training database consisted of uh, uh, of uh, different poems, some of them without rhymes. So you really think that you, they could generally uh, learn rhyming just from seeing rhyming poems, or...? Yes, I think so. Okay. Have you signed the contract? <laughs> uh, not yet. <laughs>
Well, I guess there are no reviews yet, but I'd still be wondering if you plan to, uh, for instance, send the, the poems to some anonymous contest. Okay. You have no evaluation by, by, the, by the critics or uh, human beings, uh, right? I actually sent, sent it to uh, one critic. And uh, I didn't tell him that it was generated by, by computer, of course. Uh, and the review wasn't bad, wasn't good, because uh, I asked him if the poems are good enough to publish it and sell it. So he, he was quite tough. Uh, it, uh, it wasn't definitely rejected, but um, it wasn't very positive, of course. Yeah, but um, it's comparable. It, it, and uh, definitely he doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, notice that it wasn't uh, created by a human, that it was generated by, by computer. And uh, I'd like to add that the quality of the poems uh, are, uh, reflects the quality of the training data. So the... <laughs> So uh, it is the, the, the poems are average. If I used uh, a corpus of uh, cipher, for example, the quality would be much higher. Okay, and I think uh, we have no time. So, so thank you for your attention.